Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMakeVince.com and in this video today I hope to prove that good things really do come in small packages. So if you see here, tiny little rucksack from my daughter, optional pom-pom, and it is bursting at the seams with ideas for you to take away with you if, for example, you're going away with a family camping or if you're going to a festival or you're going somewhere where you haven't got access to AC power. Everything in here, apart from one thing, will work off battery power. And in here, believe it or not, I can give you the cinema experience up to 100 inches. I can give you numerous game systems, all contained in here. So in here I've got loads of different ideas, but realistically when you go away, you're only going to be picking one or two of them. So in the description I'm going to put the timestamps of each of the ideas, and then you can just go straight to the one or the two or the three that you like the look of. So first of all I'm going to unpack this so you've got an idea of what's coming up in the video, and then I'm going to go through each of the ideas. So I hope you enjoy it. It's like the TARDIS, small on the outside but huge on the inside. There we go, bag's empty. Let's get started. So here we have the Android TV set up and it's just projecting onto the cupboard door over there. Obviously the nearer we get, the smaller it is, the further away we get, the bigger it is. So we're gonna put it on the ceiling at the end of the video just to show you how big it is and also turn the lights off to make it much better. So as you can see, it's not connected to any AC outlet at all. It's getting all its power from the internal battery on the projector and also this anchor power bank here. So the anchor power bank can output five volts at 2.4 amps or up to 2.4 amps. It's coming out on a USB lead that goes into a barrel jack connector, similar to this one here, but slightly larger. Now you may have to buy these leads off places like Amazon and eBay because often with things like this, they come with their own power supply, but obviously you need to convert that into USB. So it's absolutely fine because it is still five volts and this one here is a B-Link GT1 Ultimate. And if we have a look at the back, you can see that the input takes five volts at two amps so because the anchor power bank is 5 volts at 2.4 amps it will power that no problem at all now we've got our remote control with it so obviously that's absolutely fine if you want to watch things like youtube and stuff then we're going to need an internet connection in which case then just use the hotspot off your mobile phone so if you have for example a 3g or a 4g connection then turn on your hotspot and then you will connect to the wi-fi off this between here and here you could also connect via bluetooth but wi-fi is just easy now, to make it a little bit more interesting, because it's an Android TV box, we have the option of loads of Android games, in which case then, it would be good to play it on the Nintendo Switch Joy-Con. So, these are nice and small, they don't take up much room at all, they take up about a third or less of the room of an actual full-size controller. So, all we need to do is plug it into a Magic NS adapter, and that's made by Mayflash, and in case you're interested, if you know about these, it's on the red setting at the moment. And that will work as a full controller, that one in the right hand, this one in the left hand, and then you've got all the buttons there and the triggers and everything up there. So that's the setup, now I'm gonna turn the lights off and I'm just gonna show you around it, and then we're gonna put it up in the ceiling just to show you what it looks like on the big screen. Okay, so here you can see I'm using the remote control to move around the place. You've got BBC iPlayer up there. You've got YouTube down here. And then it's uh, an Android TV box. So remember, you've got the whole of the Play Store to choose from. If you're into your Android gaming, pick ones that have controller support, such as Spider-Man 2. You've got Pocket Rally Lite up there. You've got Riptide GP. These all support the controller. Uh, Modern Combat 5. Asphalt 8 BB Racing. You've got Assassin's Creed over there. Uh, Minecraft, obviously there's loads to choose from. If you're into Kodi, you've got an option to do Kodi. You've got your internet web browser. So there's absolutely loads to choose from with the Android TV box, and you should have plenty there to keep you entertained. Right, let me pop it up on the ceiling and load something up just to show you what it looks like. Okay, so you can see now it's pointing straight up, and now it's straight up on the ceiling. And you can see that it takes up most of the ceiling. So if you look over there, that's the edge of the wall there and over there is the other edge of the wall. So measuring it, it looks to be over 70 inches. Now I've got low ceilings in this house. If there was higher ceilings, then it will go all the way up to 100 inches. So it depends. If you want it larger, you're gonna be putting it 
further away from the objects you're projecting to. Now obviously you're not going to be spoilt for choice if for example you were going camping. You might want to put it against your car door in which case then you're not really going to be getting much more than a 32 inch screen equivalent of that is still more than enough. If it's going to go onto the ceiling of your tent then you will be able to get a bit more but it's not going to look as good as this because remember this is a completely flat white ceiling while a tent's going to be whipping around the place in the wind and stuff so it's not going to look as good as it does here. But you get the idea if for example you've got a wall or something you can project it onto when it's dark it's still going to look good. Now as you can see here in the darkness I've got the Joy-Cons from the Nintendo Switch and when I move them around you can see they're moving up and screen here so let's just uh, go to let's go to BB racing and see what that looks like now the sound does come out of the projector but I can't put volume on it because in case it gets flagged for copyright but let me just put it up just for a second you can see it goes quite loud So with this one we're just going to be using right trigger to accelerate, left trigger to brake and then Y is going to be the power up and left and right is the left analog stick so it's exactly as you would expect it to be. There's no lag, there's no anything, it seems to be perfect. I mean there's going to have to be a tiny bit of lag because we're using the Magic NS adapter via Bluetooth but nothing that you can actually notice. Right so now if you want to see a power up let me just get onto a bit of straight. All right, here we go. There you go, you can see. All right, obviously it's more immersive and stuff when you've got sound on it. Right, okay, let's move on to the next one. So here we have the SNES Mini and we've got it set up with two controllers so we can play two player and you can see it's projecting up there onto the cupboard door. I'm going to put it on the ceiling in a minute and at the moment we're powering this from battery power again so you can see there's no AC power here so you can bring this wherever you want. Now we don't actually have to power it from the power bank because Nintendo recommend that you do 5 volts at 1 amp and that is exactly the same as what this output is here. So if we were to turn this off I'm just going to show you it working straight in the projector itself. The reason I don't recommend it is because you only get a two hour battery life on this anyway when it's fully charged and obviously if you start to then plug things into this USB power port then you're going to start to drain it very quickly but just to show you it working that's plugged in there like so turn this back on we don't need that at the moment and now you can bring this wherever you want and you will see that you can now play your SNES games or 21 of them two player on the majority of them anywhere you want, anywhere in the world. So that's pretty good, but bearing in mind you're really gonna to start to drain the battery in here. So I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna put it back to the anchor power bank. Right, okay, so that's how we're set up there and you can see it's working up there. And again, volume is absolutely fine. It's just that I have to turn it down for copyright strikes, but if I just give it a quick blast, there you go, and back down again. Right, okay, so you can see it moving along there. Let me turn the lights off. Let's pick a two player game. Okay, so here we have this controller here, which is Donkey Kong. And then if I was to swap, this controller here will be Diddy Kong. Right, let's pop it up on the ceiling so you can see the size of it. So now you can see that the projector's pointing straight up. And as you can see, most of the ceiling's taken up there. So we've got over 70 inches. Right, okay, let's move on to the next one. So here we have the PSP Go set up, and with this we don't even need the anchor power bank. There's no electricity supply feeding anything. All that's happening is this PSP Go is going to power the picture with the internal battery, and then this projector is going to display the picture via the internal battery here. So we need a few things to be able to convert the old technology onto new technology, but it's very simple to do. So what we've got here is a lead. You get these ones off eBay 
for a few pounds. They're not expensive, normally they originate from China. And this is a PSP connector here, a PSP Go. This is different than the earlier PlayStation portables. And then it's gonna connect onto composite. So all we're gonna do is plug that one into there, like so. And then this one here will need to go into our projector, but it can't because our projector will only take HDMI as the input. So we need to convert it. So here we have a composite to HDMI converter and you can see the input is composite and the output is HDMI so make sure you don't mix it around the other way because loads of them have this as the input and then this as the output which is also popular if you wanted to connect for example newer equipment to older TVs but this is the other way around older equipment onto newer stuff so we're going to be plugging in the yellow which will do our picture and then we're going to be doing our left audio and right audio. That's that. We're then going to be plugging in our HDMI cable from the projector into the output here. And we need to give this thing power. So let's plug in the mini USB into there. And we're actually going to power it from the USB port on the little eight man projector here. Because this will actually allow a one amp output on the power supply here. So there we go. That's plugged into there like so. And now, all we have to do is convert the signal from here. So at the moment, you can see that it's not actually projecting anything up there. But all I need to do is go into the menu here. And then go down to where it says Connected Display Settings. Press X. Switch Video Output. And it's going to say, do I want to switch? I'm going to go to yes. And now that symbol will come up there. And if you have a look up here, it will now project it onto the, uh, to the cupboard up there. There we go. Right, okay, let me turn off the lights. I'll show you a quick bit on here and then I'll put it on the ceiling again. I've got Gran Turismo here. And I'm just using the PSP as my controller. There we go. Now you can see that it does box it, it windows it in the middle. So you're going to have a lot smaller screen than the projector's capable of. Okay, so you can see it there now. So let's pop it on the ceiling and see what it looks like. I've got a feeling when we blow it up that big that it's gonna look pretty bad. Okay, so you can see it's up there now and it actually looks pretty good. I would hazard a guess that that's over 40 inches, so it's still a big screen. And uh, yeah, the, the resolution's not great on it at all, but it is playable and I thought it would look a lot worse when it was blown up, but it does actually look okay and it's nice and colorful. And uh, obviously the sound, I've just got to turn down the sound because there's music playing in the background, but let me just give you a quick blast of it. So let's just put it up to 100%. There you go. So you can see it pumps out more than enough sound. Right, and obviously you can change your views and stuff. So there you go, you can see you can connect up the PSP Go to the big screen with very little equipment and the results are actually quite playable. Right, let's move on to the next one. So here we have the PlayStation TV set up and it's just projecting onto the cupboard there. I'll put it on the ceiling in a minute. Uh, this is the PlayStation TV here and the good thing is it is absolutely tiny. So you can see how small that is there. Now, if you're not sure what a PlayStation TV is, basically, if you just imagine a PlayStation Vita, but on the big screen. So you have your PlayStation Vita for handheld, and then you can use this when you're at home on your big screen. So all we're doing is the same sort of setup, but we don't need to be at home. You can see we're not connected to any electricity supply again. This is running off the anchor power bank again, because like before, 5 volts, 2.6 amps out. This only takes 5 volts, 1.6 amps. So again, this will be more than enough to be able to power the PlayStation TV. Now, you can either download games onto here directly from the PlayStation Store, or you can put in your cartridges. So for example, if you do want to put in your Vita cartridges, you just need to 
open up this bit here and then you get your game cartridge. Sorry, it's hard to do this one hand. You get your game cartridge and you just pop it in there like so. Okay, and then you will see that Killzone Mercenary has now come up at the bottom of the screen there. Right, okay. So, to get it, controllers working on this, you can use your PlayStation 4 or your PlayStation 3 controller. Problem with them is they are quite big if, for example, the object is that you want to just carry this maybe like in a big coat pocket or something like that. In which case, you can use the Joy-Cons, but you will have to use them via adapters. So, at the moment, I've got these two Joy-Cons synced up left and right, just like a proper controller, left Joy-Con and right Joy-Con, so it's not as two player, this is working as one player, on the Mayflash Magic NS adapter. And then from here, I've got it connected into a Cronus Max. Now with the Cronus Max, it will work fine from now on, but the very first time you do it, you will have to sync it up with a PlayStation 3 or a PlayStation 4 controller. So you would plug it into your PlayStation TV and you would plug in your PlayStation 4, for example, controller in via a USB cable, and then it will remember the settings of that controller. And all this is doing now is mimicking a PlayStation 4 controller. And so, for example, if I was to unplug this now, you will see it will lose power, but yet when I plug it back in again, so you can see right now that these are losing sync. There you go. Okay, but when I plug this back in, I won't have to authorize it again because I haven't plugged it into anything else in the meantime. And now if you have a look here, these will sync up again. That's synced up and that's synced up and now you can move your weight around the screen there, you see. So if you want a real portable version, these two, including these two adapters, are still going to be smaller than a PlayStation 3 or a PlayStation 4 controller, purely because they're so flat. And also, the reason I'm using Joy-Cons again is because that's what I've used in every other part of the video, just to show you that it's kind of versatile. You can use these on most things. Right, okay. Let's uh, do a little bit of gameplay, and then I'm going to show you it working on the ceiling as well. Right, so here we have Nidhogg. And basically the objective is I'm the yellow one, I've got to get through to the right hand side and the uh, computer has to stop me and vice versa. Okay, so now he's got right of way, so now I have to try and stop him, he's going to fall off there. There we go. And now once you get through, you see you get to the final screen and then you're the winner because you've got through those screens. It doesn't look great, but it is actually a great game once you get used to it and it's a very good two player game. So here we have Skyforce Anniversary, looks really good, still using the Joy-Cons here. And with this very small setup, and very light as well, it doesn't weigh much if you were to carry this away in your bag, or you could put this even in your pocket, and uh, you end up with a screen that's over 70 inches. And when you're using the Joy-Cons, it's still very responsive. I'm afraid I can't show you properly because the downside with this projector is because it's very low on lumens, it means that the room has to be dark for it to look good. So if I turn the lights on now, you can just about see it, but it's not very bright and it's not very playable at all. So really you need to be in a dark place for this to work well. So now the next setup is a Nintendo Switch setup. Now unfortunately with this one we do have to plug it into AC power. And a little white lie, I did not have this power adapter included in the original white rucksack that you've seen purely because the UK one is so big it takes up so much room. But the way I look at it is, if you're bringing your Nintendo Switch away with you, chances are you're going to be bringing the adapter anyway because you need to charge it up after the battery dies after four or five hours. So you will still see that this setup here is still a very compact setup to be able to play the Nintendo Switch on possibly a screen size of 100 inches. Now, we don't even need this power adapter here, but I'm just keeping it here because remember, the battery life on this is only up to two hours. So if you want it to last longer, we can actually charge this from here and then we can easily get much more playtime out of it. So with this one here, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna plug this into the power supply and then I'm just using a little portable dock here the power supply goes into the dock, the output of the dock goes into the input of the projector, and that's it. And then we can charge it up from here if we so wish, in which 
case I will actually do that just to show that working. So I'm just going to use the USB from here and then plug this in to here and you will see that the lights will light up here. Okay, can you see now? It's one light here, so it will, when it's fully charged, go all the way up to four lights. Right, let's plug in the Nintendo Switch and you will see then the screen will come on to the cupboard up there. Right, so I'm plugging that in now, so the, it should vanish from there and it should come up here in a couple of seconds. And there we have it. Right, okay. Right, let's do, uh, let's do two player FIFA using these two Joy-Cons. Okay, so here we are FIFA and I'm just using the two button layout and you can see that the red Joy-Con is Watford and then the blue Joy-Con is Arsenal. Right, let me turn the lights off and then you'll be able to see it properly. So you can see now, obviously I'm doing this one hand, let me just dribble around the place. Right, let me put it on the big screen, right up on the ceiling. Right, so now you can see it's up on the ceiling. Now ignore the fact that you see it flickering through the camera. With your own eyes, you can't actually see that. But it looks good. Colours and everything look well. Oh, right, there we go. So there we go, such a simple setup can actually produce very good results. I'm using the Wi-Fi hotspot from my phone to get internet into the switch at the moment. Now it's just a shame that we have to use an AC outlet to get power supply into this portable dock. If we could get a power bank that outputted 15 volts, then we wouldn't need that AC power supply. But when I looked, I couldn't find them. I think I might have seen one a long time ago, but I couldn't find it recently. And I think that was just from a Chinese company. But maybe as time moves on, you will be able to get power banks that you can select 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, 15 volts, etc. And then that would be ideal in a setup like this because then it would all become portable. Right, let's move on to the final one. So here we have the Windows 10 setup, and in my opinion, this is the best one out of all of them because of the flexibility it gives you. If you use something like this, a GPD Win, which is a tiny Windows 10 laptop, it's very portable, and as well as that, it has a controller built into it. So if you look, how simple is this? We just have one lead coming out of the back. Okay, it comes out via a mini HDMI. I've just done an adapter to turn it into a full-size one, and then it just goes into the projector. That's all we need. Now, just to give us something extra, so we've got full access to the internet, so we can actually watch whatever we want on Netflix, then I've just got it connected up to a portable Wi-Fi hotspot. But even if you haven't got access to the internet, you can still download a lot of Netflix movies offline and then you can watch it whenever you want. Same with your Steam games or your old emulators and stuff, they will work offline. But if you want to do anything, then by having internet access, it just opens up the world to you. Now, you won't be able to run the latest games on here because it's not going to be powerful enough, so don't think that you're going to be able to play Forza 7 on it, but you will be able to play games like Cuphead and a lot of the older games as well. And as you can see there, it's projecting onto there. I've just got Netflix here at the moment, but you can then obviously move it up to the ceiling and it becomes much bigger, which I'm going to show you that in a minute. Now, if you look at the controller here, we've got a lot of options. We've got the D-pad here, left analog stick, right analog stick. The buttons are marked up as Xbox buttons, but if you look closely, they're also marked up as the PlayStation buttons. And then here we have the shoulder buttons at the corners. Right, let me pop it up onto the ceiling so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so I've got the projector turned up now, and it's going straight onto the ceiling. And you can see there, again, it's taken up most of the ceiling. So you've got a 70 inch plus screen up there, all working via that tiny projector and if you have a look here you can see the cursor moving around in the middle there so there's no point in me showing you anything on here because it's just going to be Cuphead or it's just going to be Netflix or something like that so let me just quickly uh, go to Netflix just to show you what it looks like but I don't actually need to do anything with it because you can get the idea that when you click on a film that it's going to be very big like so so there you go, you can see it there now, and obviously you can make it full screen if you so wish. 
Now, obviously, you don't just need a laptop to do this. You will also be able to do this for, for example, a lot of Android phones and iPhones if you were to get the relevant adapters. So, for example, if you had a newer iPhone, you would just get a Lightning 2 HDMI adapter, and then you would be able to do exactly the same thing via the projector again. It's just that with that little GPD Win, it gives you so much more options because of the controller built into it and just the fact that it is Windows 10 laptop. So, it will appeal to most people. So, in this video, I've just given you some ideas. Of course, there's lots more things that you can connect up to the projector to make things portable when you're out and about. But you've got some ideas to get started with now, and then hopefully this might help you out next time you're going away for camping or a, a festival or something along those lines. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care. Bye now.